My name is Kim Van Fleet. I am from central Pennsylvania. I am a visiting instructor and I teach a number of classes, including uh, environmental science for non-majors. And then I also teach uh, mammalogy, ornithology, and wildlife monitoring techniques. The Mariner 2 East Line has been a major issue across South Central Pennsylvania, Southwestern PA, and Southeastern PA. It's a pipeline that extends across 17 counties, and it will be carrying natural gas list liquids that are extremely volatile. If there would be an accident along this pipeline where there was a leak, would uh, take out, if there was a point of ignition, a source of ignition, it could actually take out about 1,000 to 1,200 foot on either side of the pipeline. So we're talking about a quarter mile impact zone, and that's just the explosion. Then you have the heat zone that can extend up to a half mile, which means you could have melting siding on homes. People that were living within these impact zones are being written off. Uh, it's just a cost of doing business. They had uh, an explosion several years ago out uh, around the Pittsburgh area, southwestern PA, where a home actually burned. Uh, luckily, the, the man's wife and child, she had just left the house with the baby to take it to daycare, okay? And 15 minutes after they had left, this pipeline exploded. He was home because he had an injury. He escaped his burning home, but he received burns over 70% of his body just from the heat, putting a value on human life. And at that value should be a high priority, not low, not a cost of doing business. This pipeline was supposed to be done three years ago, and they're still trying to put it all in because they keep running into all these problems with the geology. They're not listening to everybody. They keep trying to cut corners. They lie on their paperwork. And I think at the Snitz Creek site, DEP has fined them once again. They are now up to millions of dollars in fines from DEP relative to just polluting local waterways and streams, contaminating wells. So there's a lot of stuff that's going on that they intentionally hide so people don't see how severe it is, whether it's fracking or whether it's putting in these pipelines. A lot of public officials, you know, they fell for it. Plus, Sunoco donated a lot of money to numerous campaigns because they, you know, they, they are pretty much just a, a company that builds pipelines and transports it as far as energy transfer equity. Can you effectively extract these resources and help to maintain more balance in the environment? Possibly. Long term, I'm not so certain. We've done a lot of damage out there. There's a lot to fix. Your generation in particular is going to be paying for decades. That money always comes out of the pockets of the working class, you know? And there's a lot of things out there we have to fix because of these past and current transgressions. One way that everybody can get involved is to pay attention to the issues. And there's, there's an energy and there's a passion I'm seeing in students that I haven't seen in a long time. And maybe it's because I'm around a lot of environmental science majors, but I think it's more than that because in my classes, I also see a lot of non-majors and they're kind of getting excited. But the main thing is that actually educate yourself about the issues. Get the emotion out of it. Look at it from a, a solid, sound, logical perspective. Hold your emotions in turn those emotions into passion to doing the right thing. So voting is probably still one of the most powerful weapons we have next to education. You know, that, that's a fundamental right. But use that vote wisely and know that, you know, probably, although it does have an effect on the national level, getting involved locally and local elections are so much more important. Because with everything that brings about change in this country, I would say that 99% of it starts at the local community level.